Okay, well I have a new swarm collected and hived in a box outside and wouldn't you know it, it drops from 80 degrees down to 54 and overnight we had almost two inches of rain and uh, look what's going on outside. We're gonna have to do something to help these bees and not just the uh, bees that we have hived that are recent swarm but all the bees because all the pollen on these sunflowers that are now taken down by my squirrel and the heavy rain has put a strain on them. Look what's happening here. This is a worker bee that's on a landing board in the rain. It's been cast out by its fellow workers. Here's a drone also cast out. Now this is at 7.30 in the morning. So it's really early. It's much darker than it appears here because the camera has uh, keyed it up a little to make it look brighter. But the bees are busy. If you don't go outside into your bee yard and see what's going on at sunrise, you're missing a lot of activity. These bees are hygienic and they've been pulling out uh, cells of bees they don't approve of. So they're pulling out the pupae. You can see all the little legs on the right there that are laying on the bottom of the board. You can see that they've chewed stuff down. They're also licking all the surfaces and sanitizing the colony. If you didn't come out early in the morning, all these bits and pieces would be gone and you wouldn't know about it. Here's another worker bee. She's out, she's been in the rain, she's on the landing board, and she is not welcome back in the colony for reasons that we don't always know of. Also, you see some little red spots. Uh, some of that is propolis. And uh, the bees are just cleaning house. Look to the right there. We have remnants of uh, developing bees, developing brood that they uncapped. The caps are still laying around there. And uh, they've been throwing them out also. These are all different colonies, all doing the same thing because they are the same hygienic strain of bees. And uh, you can see in the background there, they're working. Here's another drone laying upside down in water. He's pretty much doomed. They're tossing him out. And he's wiggling his feet, but nobody cares. You can see all the females in the background there just going about their interior colony work. Lots of cast-offs. Again, if you came back in an hour, you would see no evidence of this behavior. So it's important to come out. Now, if you look at that larvae that's dead center there, it is alive. So they uncapped it and pulled it out. There may have been Varroa in there. These bees will pull out developing brood and discard them if there's any evidence of Varroa in the cell. Now notice that the water's beaded up nicely on my hive body here. That's because I'm using Helmsman exterior finish on all these hives now. And it looks like it's holding up great. I've been using that since March. This is the Flow Hive 2. These bees are all staying inside with the cold weather didn't cast out any and here's the another flow hive full size and they've cast out a lot and you can see the bee dead center in that entrance there it is alive and you can see its antenna moving and again you might feel like you want to put these inside the hive and save them there's a reason why the workers are tossing them out there's some uh, health aspect to them that we don't understand as observers but the bees certainly know what they're going to put up with and they discard fellow workers, drones, and bee parts developing larvae as they see fit. And that's what hygienic bees do. Even in this cold weather, no big surprise, yellow jackets are getting around and they are cleaning up around feeders and just doing their thing. They can fly in the rain, they fly in the cold, even while the bees are still grounded. Now this is my hive that I established recently. I just put a swarm in it and we put those screen reducers in there to help protect them. It's a single deep, but with all this rain, we're gonna have to feed it. So I'm gonna review a couple of things today with this video, and one is this hive top feeder. It's called the Rapid Bee Feeder, and I got it on Amazon. It's very simple. The plastic materials are very thin. They say they're food grade plastics. And of course it has this little inner cover, and notice the ridges on it. Pretty well designed. I'm not excited about the material thickness. It is fairly flimsy. But with these ridges, the bees can climb up through that central column. I'm looking at the little tag sticking out here that supports the clear cup that sits over the top. This keeps the bees from free swimming out into the liquid sugar water, whatever you're going to put in it, and keeps them safe in this little cone. So we'll talk about some of the things I like about it. Here it is all put together. And of course, as you fill that outer reservoir, it will fill through the inside there too. Now this is the upside down part of it. That central cone actually extends beyond the bottom of this feeder. And there it is, sticking out. So if you have a normal 
inside cover, it has a hole in it. That hole is not big enough for this tube to stick through. So it's a puzzle to me kind of why they designed it this way. The flow hive inner covers do have a large diameter hole in them and it does fit this hole perfectly. And we are going to put this on a flow hive. And I'm going to show you how I overcome this. That hole is about an inch and a half in diameter. So the standard holes in the inner covers are not big enough for that to stick into. So I'm going to have to use shims to raise this up off the bottom and I have other reasons for doing that which I'll explain. Here are the parts, the basin from the underside, and of course that clear cover. This shows how much it protrudes, and I've made shims out of 2x4 material, just sanded them down a little bit. These shims are going to do some uh, things for me and for the bees. One, it's going to keep this up off the bottom of that inner cover so that the bees have access to that space and can roam throughout it. And they can also, now that the shims are pushed in until they're touching that central column, the bees can climb up the wood and go right up inside there and get feed. So they will have access to the box that I'm going to put this feeder in. And here it is with the cover on. Again, the material's thin. The number one complaint about it, of course, is being damaged upon arrival based on Amazon reviews. So here we go. Uh, this is Brood Booster. Now, you know I use Honey Bee Healthy and I use Pro Health, and I've tested all of those. This is something new that I'm going to try out, which I also picked up on Amazon. I like to try new things. Made by Bountiful Bees. It's made in the United States, all natural food grade materials, and it has built in measuring reservoirs here, one ounce and half ounce. So that's what I'm going to use. We're going to follow the recommended dose of uh, half an ounce per quart. And so we're going to put two ounces for a gallon here. Here's the information about the company. They're in Wellsville, Utah, and it's interesting. So we're going to review this. I'm going to use this as a stimulant for the feed. But mostly it's going to make sure that the sugar syrup that's 50-50 that I'm going to put in the reservoir there to feed them will not spoil. So when you add essential oils like this to your sugar water, you're never going to see that uh, black buildup in there that happens as the sugars degrade. So here we go. We're at the entrance here of the swarm that I put in. It's been in here a little over a week. I'm going to give them a little smoke. Probably not necessary. They're very calm. And uh, we just don't want them to waste any of their valuable resources defending their colony. So we're going to pull up in the top here. This is the inner cover that, again, comes with the flow hives. And it is big enough to put the feeder in without any modification. They have been building comb. They're kind of running it everywhere in here. Now to the left, they did follow the frames. But if you notice near the middle there, they started bridging the frames together. I don't care how they build their comb. I'm just trying to get these guys through winter. So now if we put this feeder in the top here and it sits flush on top, we've basically lost the ventilation capability, plus we've provided an area in the top of the hive that the bees can't get to. So they can't enforce their own uh, parasite protection and things like that. So I put these shims in there. We're going to put this round feeder right on top. And now there's an airspace underneath and the bees will just climb up the shims and go right up that central column. And then they'll have access to the syrup, but we will also be able to provide ventilation through that top cover. So the inner cover doesn't seal things up. Now there's an advantage here. We can pour this one. Uh, some of the other hive top interior feeders, if they tip a little bit, they may spill into the hive. We really want to avoid that. Some of the bucket styles that invert and have the screen on them, if there's expansion and contraction with these rapid temperature changes we have this time of year, they will leak out into the colony as well. And we want to prevent that. We want to keep our bees dry so that they can keep themselves warm. So this thing looks like it's going to hold about half a gallon. There's a yellow jacket zipping by there. We're going to close it up here. And uh, the good news is, of course, I can pull the cover off without smoking or anything. And we can inspect the levels of the sugar water and see how the bees are taking it in the days to come. So we're going to put a medium frame around it here. And that's what I have, a medium super. It's a man lake design sitting on top of a flow hive base. The man lake frames are a little bigger. And uh, there it is in place. Lots of room in there. We're going to come back and check on it a few days later. But uh, now we just put another inner cover on top. And then I'm going to put the ventilated Be Smart design cover on top of that. And uh, this thing sheds water pretty good. It extends out farther than some of the other covers that I have. And uh, it has that airspace in it, so it's insulating and ventilating. So those are two characteristics that I'm looking for 
I want to make sure and get this warm uh, off to a good start and during days like today when it's raining and the weather's terrible we want them to have resources well up inside the hive which prevents other bees from being able to rob them out so that's the setup pretty simple I'll give you updates later on and of course here's the landing board of that same hive and you'll notice that the bees are finding pollen even though it's been raining a lot lately I don't know if that's coming from the uh, sunflowers we have lots of pollen resources that are just coming into bloom now so we're going to provide for these bees pretty well the uh, the thing that we want to make sure they have is plenty of energy to keep their brood warm so again now these are the same landing boards i showed at the beginning of the video and i want you to notice how clean and dry they are now so the bees have cleaned everything up notice there's no dead bees no dead drones we don't see torn apart uh, brood strewn all over the landing board so if I hadn't come out early in the morning, I would never know that they're cleaning house the way they have been here. So it's very interesting. The rain finally did stop. These guys are doing washboarding again, which means they're licking the surfaces everywhere. And they're doing their general cleanup routine. Very interesting hygienic bees. They're doing well. I think they're going to go into the winter really strong. Now, here we go with the yellow jackets. 51, bazooka. Yellow jackets, zero. So the bug zooka is what I use. I carry it with me when I go out. If I find uh, wasps on things, I just suck them up with that. And here they are in the capsule. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to feed your bees when it's raining. Otherwise, they're going to consume all the honey and resources that they've worked so hard to save. Thanks for watching. All the best.